what's going on people I hope you all guys are doing well well in this video i just thought um why not break down some of the vfx stuff that i did um in the ghana video and if you haven't seen that definitely go make sure to go check it out um so i have some compositions right here and let me start from this one so i'm just gonna preview all of them then we can kind of uh start breaking them down um one after the other this one was one of my favorite um this one I had to do some 3d stuff here right there um this one was also good being able to track the water underneath the, the canal there it's pretty good um this one i remember sharing this one on my story um i did explain a little bit how to do it but probably go a little bit more in depth uh some of you might have seen this type of um um transition in a way and this is another one it's very similar and uh what was the last one oh you guys saw this one too so real quick um to break them down I think we should start with this one right here the mask um the building of the mask so literally <laughs> so what you really need to do here is um you could literally use just a photo and make it seem like it's a video um one thing i'll say here is for this one it was actually a video i'll be honest so what i did was there was a guy here moving there was another guy here moving and I had to rotoscope um, them out and the way I did that was just uh, my freeze frame uh, let me see here um, let's see hmm. maybe I didn't even bother using that one but anyways um the original shot there was a guy moving right here to the left and there was another guy moving here so what i did is i just uh freezed that one frame and then i took it to photoshop did some cleanup then brought it back into after effects and then um i had that one still shot which is this so then with that one still shot went back into photoshop then i broke them down into different levels so this is the original photo right here the way it looks right now and like i was saying what i did is i wanted each of these pillars of the mask to sort of emerge like you know kind of them stacking on each other so i had to go to photoshop to um to kind of you know cut them out so then bring my photoshop layers into after effects as a composition as you can see here these are all the compositions um this one is from after effects so this is one of the composition you can see the top of the box right there um this is another one the top this is one of the players to the left um another one right there so you can kind of get the gist of how I kind of had to just separate each of them and once you separate them like that like your work is already like half done so bringing it back in, into after effects okay real quick one thing i'm gonna say is that you see this background here you can see how the cloud is just very flat with shots like this it would really really help you because then um if it was a video there won't be changing of lighting and all that but that's that's one of the good thing with just working with a steel frame with shots like this so because i'm working with just a steel frame it's very easy for me not to have to deal with um the uh, cloud changing and lighting and all that so anyways go back here so you can see each of my layers i've kind of maxed had to mask them out um individually like that luckily with photoshop did that and then 
I started doing all the animations, the positions. So all these are like the positions of each of them. And so I took them from bottom to the top. And after that, what I then did was I didn't want them to just come in, you know, at once. That that doesn't make your animation interesting. You know, you want some sort of um, overlapping between your um, your objects um, inside your animation. So that was why I just did a little bit of um, offset. So offsetting them is what makes them not come out like you know just at once. This now makes the animation a lot more interesting compared to if I were to grab all of them now and just press uh, this you can see they all come together right but compare that to this voila you know that was like you know a lot more interesting so yeah and my boy did had some really cool sound effects um for for the animation so it's kind of really cool so then the last thing i did after the animation was done i just thought you know what because it's a still image but I still wanted to give that feel of I'm working with a video. So why not add some sort of um, scale to act like the camera was moving closer to the mask. So I just added scale as you can see from here. And you can see how the, the, the scale makes it go back. So it feels like when I was filming it, it feels like I was actually coming back. There's no way my hand was going to be that uh steady anyway so right there there you have it so let us go to another one right here this one is fairly simple but um i mean i just don't want to say it's simple what what if for some of you that might have not um encountered um shots like this so really with this is just you're just gonna be playing with your mask um so with your pen tool so what i did was because this guy was coming in the shot let me let me take out the mask you can change the mask to none so now that i have none it's not gonna uh the mask is, the mask is not gonna be effective so anyways so you can see how i applied the mask to the guy so we want this guy you already have your shot like right here this is your shot right and you want a transition where you want something to kind of overlap you know uh, the, the guy is gonna be in the foreground and you want to have him overlap on your background so you kind of trying to use him as your transition so um, what you want to do is as it's coming you already have your mask around you know the footage and then as it gets closer to the point where he is now getting off of you know from where he was coming from then you need to start masking so you will see it's a frame by frame masking that's the crazy thing with this but luckily because the shot is not that long i was able to do it frame by frame um so you can see here i was just adjusting my mask accordingly so in each of the frame I was masking the reason why you don't see the effect of the mask right now is because I have it on none so if I switch that to add you can see um, so yeah so because this is not alpha channel now you can put this footage on top of another footage so as the guys you know passing through then it reveals another footage behind the previous footage so it's such a good way to kind of uh, transition from scene to scene so yeah um, I think that was that with that one and another thing I was gonna say is that um, you're not confined to using justice you can also use um, like your um, brush to your roto brush to where you're able to um, isolate you know a part of your um your footage and then <clears throat> sorry it creates um sort of um the mask for you in a way so let us go to the other shot this one is it's, it's the same but just a different shot you can see this one guy 
and this guy comes in and then you know uh is able we're able to use it to transition into another shot um this one let me see how we can do this so this one is is one of those where um your tracking just has to be really really good tracking has to be good. and with a track like this i think that's where um mocha comes in because mocha is a planar tracker it's really really good for that and it does a pretty excellent job so what i did was i had my footage here and then i add mocha to it mocha comes with after effects this is like essential so it's kind of like basic in a way so um if i click on mocha right now it's gonna launch mocha and you can see this was my track so with mocha what you want to do is you just want to pick a point from after effects that you know that this is gonna this is the the frame that where you're trying to track faces the the camera like as flat as possible so it can get as much detail before the camera rotates in a different way so i have here um and then i tracked backwards and i tracked forward so with my track right here and this is my track right here all i just have to do then is um uh, once that is done all i have to do now is you see this right here this this button right here this is very very important it's gonna expand your uh what's it called the surface that you track it's gonna expand it all across the the frame so that your uh your track is as accurate as possible so once you click that uh you just want to save and it will copy to clipboard and you can just close that and once you come back into after effects then you duplicate um you duplicate your footage and mind you remember i said you want to make sure that you're picking a point that you know you want to use as your your main track because it's the one that faces the camera you know the most so what i did was um you know duplicated and then i took that one frame i took it into photoshop so inside photoshop inside photoshop then i went in and as you can see i cleaned out i cleaned out this um the previous hand that was there I cleaned it out then I brought it back into After Effects so then now bringing it back into After Effects then I added the the hands of the clock as you can see right there and then I animated them individually to kind of like and then to make it more believable I added uh, shadows if I take out the shadow let's see what it looks like you can see it just looks very flat and not look yeah mm, nah. so yeah so let's add the drop shadows and you can just see feel the difference it just gives like a depth so and then um what was that uh, sorry guys I think it was seven yeah it was seven so then um i had the the track uh the the smokers right added on top of this uh on top of this new footage right no actually then i come um i come into my my main composition and then i go to where it says corner pin you want to choose corner pin that supports motion blur then then you want to tell mocha like hey i want you to add this corner pin to this particular layer so the patch which is our um the file from photoshop don't forget because then we've cleaned out um the previous uh hands of the clock so that is i just renamed it to patch so now we're applying the corner pin data onto the patch and once you click um 
apply export it's gonna add it onto here so this is the information that we added here and really that's really it with um with this shot and as you can see it plays like right there uh we're gonna go on to the next shot so for this one um let's see what was happening here so this was the shot so this was the original shot right here then what i did was i had it um attracted i tracked the shot and um you can see so many so many so many so many so many uh, points so what i did then is then i picked i picked uh points i think it was this ones that i used so once you just select them you right click and i created a camera and a solid layer which is this Oh yeah so I created this solid layer right and it's just for me to gauge where you know where my uh, track is in a way so um, then I added a text what's the text Aquaba so I added this text but you know the crazy thing is when I added the text it goes on top of uh, the kennel and you know that's not realistic if i play it down look it's like what is this you know so we want to have the text under like wanting to feel like it's underwater so like it's under the kennel so what i did was then i had to i duplicated my uh the actual footage and then you can double click on it you can see right here then this is where i was able to use my roto brush tool so with the roto brush tool all you just gotta do is once you double click on your footage and you click on see roto brush then you not start painting on uh, for the most part once you do like the first the first um frame and you click on uh, space bar you hit space bar it's gonna play through your entire um footage and we'll try to gauge um from what you know from the first frame that you already um you know added all that information to but you know you might need to do some few ticks uh few tweaks here and there but um yeah i'm just gonna play back and you can see how this played back so anything inside the ping is what is being rolled out just um so you know so i have it all the way there and so once you have all that um rotted then you have to press on this freeze so that's what's gonna actually generate your rotor for you so once you press that you can see right here it says the rotor brush you will have feather contrast whatever you know and um you can also use motion blur with it so if i now go back to my main comp um because i've rolled out the the guy on the kennel and the guy on the kennel so now all i have to do is now put it on top of the uh on top of the text because then that's what will give that because now it's covering that the part of the text that was on top of them so now it gives it more you know more realistic field um that it's underwater and as far as the treatment that i give to the text so what i did really was just added displacement so displacement is what makes it a little like you know because water doesn't stay still just like that especially when something is moving on water it's gonna ripple so that was the effect that i was trying to go for like if this text was actually under water like how would it react so i mean it wasn't perfect don't get me wrong but i think it works you know um so yeah i added uh tablet uh tablet displacement 
and uh, I also had the rough edges so rough edges I just thought so even if this text was underwater like I want to give it a little bit of that like you know I just wanted it to ripple so um, I added that uh, so you can see and yeah that's really that with that well I'm not gonna have this tutorial too long so I'm gonna uh, continue with the other um, with the other compositions which is this one and this one in the next video so um, yeah check this out if you have any questions of course right here and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video ciao